Fala, fiotes! Eu sou o Kalil e seja muito bem-vindo a mais um vídeo aqui no canal Gamer Liu Games. Galera, geralmente eu faço em live, né? Esses novos... essas novidades, né? Que a IGN tá trazendo e tal, é, por conta do Miss Gore Nights na, no canal deles. Mas hoje eu tava fazendo outras coisas, não deu pra fazer e tal, então eu quero fazer um react aqui com vocês em vídeo mesmo. É, aparentemente, né? É mais um dos conteúdos exclusivos do IGN First, né, que a que a Warner cedeu para eles aí praticamente um mês inteiro de conteúdos exclusivos do Game God and Nights, e eles estão trazendo em doses homeopáticas e a gente tá vendo tudo junto aqui, né, cobrindo com vocês, curtindo, tal. No episódio de hoje, pelo que a gente já consegue ver aqui é God and Nights construindo um um uma Gotham City totalmente nova, tal, né? Então, pelo que eu entendo, é focado em Gotham, com 400 anos de história. Bom, vamos ver. Já deixa o seu like, dá aquela força, compartilha o conteúdo com quem você acredita que possa curtir né, o, o tema. E vamos lá, vamos ver juntos aqui. Tá na IGN, então, e eles colocam muitas propagandas. Então, de tempo em tempo, pode ser que apareça uma ou outra, eu vou tirando e tal, e a gente vai vendo junto, beleza? Bora lá. In the 1650s, five families left Europe, eventually landing on the rain-swept islands that pepper the mouth of what would one day be called Gotham River. Those families, the Waynes, the Cobblepots, the Elliots, the Arkhams, and the Canes, would build a colonial fort together and sow the seeds of centuries of dominance in the area. Gotham City was born. The city quickly spread beyond its original bounds, developing five boroughs, and in each, one of those five founding families would take root. In the early days, the Canes established themselves on Gotham's natural harbor, now known as Historic Gotham, tying the family to their new country's military might, building ships and weapons of war. By the 1850s, Gotham had become a major trade hub, helped along by the industrialist cobblepots and their smoke-belching Southside steel mills. Gotham continued to transform over time. In the 1920s, the Elliots took hold of the 20th century's newest means of control, mass media, and built downtown Gotham in a new Art Deco image. By the 1960s, Gotham had truly become a patchwork of industry and architecture. The Arkhams settled in North Gotham, building their famous asylum. Yes, it's in the game, and no, it's not as you've previously seen it. The Waynes, meanwhile, built their billions in New Gotham, helping advance the town into a new technological age. Which brings us to the present day, and the Gotham you'll be exploring as Batman's protégés in Gotham Knights, an open world as soaked in history as it is by neon light and vigilante-friendly shadow. Warner Brothers Games Montreal created that history early in production, a whole new timeline for a whole new version of Gotham City. And it isn't merely window dressing, the timeline informs everything from the plot, to the gameplay, to the game's biggest mystery, the Court of Owls conspiracy. The team didn't just build an open world to play in, it's truly trying to build a city. Tá, tá, peraí que é muita informação. É, ao que parece, uh, o jogo vai nos contar a história de Gotham, pelo menos é o que ele tá contando aqui, né? Desde que ela foi fundada em, na década de 1600, né? Na década. Lá em 1600, 1650, para ser mais preciso aqui. Pelo que ele falou, é, cinco, cinco famílias, né? É, acabaram construindo a cidade. Entre elas aí, os Arkans, os Cobblepots, os Elliots. Uh, quem mais? Os, os. Como é? Tem, tinha mais um? Quem? Quem? Não, quem? Não sei. E os Wayne, né? E ali foi mostrando como cada família é, ajudou a prosperidade do lugar até a data de hoje. Ok? E ali a gente já viu né, que vai ter a, o Asilo Arkham e o cara fala, não, não é como você já o conhece. Então, tô curioso, vamos embora. Desculpa cortar, galera, eu, eu tenho que ir em doses homeopáticas assim. O um mapa! Olha o mapa, pela primeira vez o um mapa, galera, olha aí. Bonito, mapa 3D e tal, legal. Ali a gente já tá vendo o R ali, que é o Robin, né? Ó o pinguim ali do lado. Um ícone meio doido que eu não faço ideia do que é. Nossa, mano, eu tô muito hypado pra jogar isso, galera. Na moral, eu quero mesmo. Key to this take on Gotham are those five boroughs and the worldview of the families that historically controlled them. So for us, the five boroughs, you know, it started with the families. The families 
moved there, they built imposing structures within those districts. So then we build around that to where the identity for those districts really is based off of that family. Within those boroughs, the team tries to tell stories without simply having someone speak them out loud. If you visit a city in real life, it's hard to tell some of that history. So because we're making a game, really what we want to do is kind of obviously reveal some of that stuff. So there's a lot of areas that are kind of stuck in time, you know, like even something is, you know, kind of generic as construction, like it becomes interesting when it's it's halted construction or it's it's now abandoned and overgrown or it's ruins, you know, all those things are more interesting for the player than, you know, just a modern city. So we tried to have a lot of those areas where it's almost stuck in time so the player can really experience what it was back then a little bit too and see how the city evolved. Olha aí, cara. É, eles construíram a cidade de Gotham meio que tematizada, né, em, em, em cinco bairros e esses cinco bairros é espelham, né? espelham uh, as cinco famílias. E tem alguns lugares das cidades que eles deixaram meio que parado no tempo, como se fosse lá de 1600 e pouco, 1800 e pouco, pra gente ter aquela sensação de que tá meio parada no tempo, como é mesmo uma cidade real, né? Numa cidade grande, por exemplo, você encontra coisas tecnológicas bonitas e tal, mas se a gente andar, 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 vai achar coisas que realmente parecem ter parado no tempo ali. E é isso que eles fizeram, aparentemente, nesse game. E ele comentou que muitas das vezes a gente vai estar em um lugar que não dá nada para ele e fuçando aquele lugar a gente vai encontrar coisas bem interessantes para se explorar. Já gostei. The team has historical and gameplay basis for every new environment. Take the cauldron built into the Cobblepot's lower Gotham area. We always would like to tell a story with every borough, and there's one specific one that is not necessarily related to the family, but is an effect of some of the projects that those families undertook, which was a mining operation that happened in a riverbed. So they decided to wall off two sides of a portion in the water and they dredged it for mining operations. It would attract workers for the mining operation. It was low cost housing. It remained like actually a slum. The cauldron's history is oh, written yeah, into its on. walls, with tumble down buildings and cramped, unplanned streets, all set in the shadow of the more prosperous districts around it. But all of this is a distinct gameplay choice too. This spot is kind of like a transition é area between the financial district and the south side. So we have like two very different themes while being in a third theme that is very organic, has a complete different way for the player to navigate over. It's a lot more parkouring. So the player always has the choice to pick the best tool and the best navigation to be também, as né? efficient as possible. And uh, with different neighborhoods ah, that olha aí, will give you different experiences. Chamando this a moto, interplay of pá, history olha aí. and gameplay can be seen across the city. The once beautiful Isso Robinson tá Park is a symbol of the city's decay, but it's also an open space where your usual stealth tactics may no longer work in the same way. The enormous Elliott Center is a literally gilded reminder of the family patriarch, complete with a museum exhibit about the family inside. And it's also a complex, multi-layered bit of vertical level design built to house the Mr. Freeze boss battle later in the game. And it's not just that timeline that acts as history here either. While this is a new take on Gotham, it includes many references to the comic books it's drawing from. Of course, there are buildings you'll know, right down to deep cut references like Noonan's sleazy bar from Olha Garth Ennis' Hitman series. But the very fabric of Gotham itself acts as an Easter egg in places. Perhaps most Vai interesting um is that this Gotham has a public mapa. history and a secret history. We already know the game will center on the Court of Owls, a shadowy, manipulative group born of the founding families. Gotham itself will reflect that conspiratorial past too. One of the things that we love about the Court of Owls, aside from the fact that you know it's a, it's a new, fresh addition to the Batman canon, is that they represent a threat that is so embedded and so intrinsic to Gotham City that even Batman doesn't know about it. And the notion of a threat that is so intimately tied to a city game. that he considers to be his city, that he knows like the back of his hand that he's been patrolling for you know literally decades at this point, that's a very intimidating and scary idea. With that in mind, what we knew is that we needed to give you a sense of Gotham's history in order to be able to show all the ways in which the court is embedded in that. 
that feeling that Gotham is kind of an adversary and that Court of Owls is the embodiment of that, the personification of it. The phrase commonly used at the studio for this is that they didn't just build up, creating those hugely visible landmark buildings and stories for every new district, but that they also built down. We started to imagine how the form of the city could be affected by that, and it started kind of helps suggest a geography, an urban geography, to the city, going all the way back to like the late 1600s. And then we started to think, okay, well, what were the major events in history that would have, that they would have reacted to? You know, is it the Revolutionary War? Is it the kind of exploitation of the West? Like the building of the railroads? Like all of these ideas became part of that conversation and allowed us to kind of build layers of accreted history. And, and we built it up and we built it down. Like we said, okay, what's buried under the city? Like, what are the hidden secrets that you can find in the course Caramba, of investigating the court of Owls? Naturally, the team isn't talking too much about what those buried secrets might be, but we see hints of it as we're shown Gotham's open world. A seemingly nondescript building might be a gang hideout, which leads to a tunnel system that brings you into an exit into Gotham that you would never have guessed at, for example. We want the Court of Owls to feel like they're involved in everything. If you were to go to a major city in North America, like often they'll build a city on top of another one. Like Chicago, like they had the fire, they just built on top of it because it's not worth like rebuilding, destroying and rebuilding. So what the undergrounds allow us to do is kind of reveal that cross section of the city. So we have areas like that where you, you know, you drop in, you keep going and you see things that you didn't know were there, that you didn't know the city was built on top of. And I think that's a really cool element. We try to allow the player to see kind of behind the scenes of the city, go under the surface and, you know, as well as seeing it from up high from the bigger landmarks. Então é isso mesmo, cara. Eles construíram tanto abaixo da cidade quanto acima dela, né? Eles tiveram como inspiração, né, o que eles mesmos falaram aí. Geralmente cidades grandes são construídas uma em cima da outra e fica um ou outro resquício do que ela já foi, né? E nesse game, pelo que eu tô entendendo, a gente vai ter muito a se explorar de maneira subterrânea e talvez, pelo que eles estão falando aqui, acabar até encontrando uma outra Gotham abaixo da Gotham atual, né? A gente tem aqui a Gotham, né, sei lá, zoando aí, vai, de 2022 aí, mas abaixo dela a gente vai encontrar resquícios da Gotham de 1600. Pô, isso é legal pra caramba, velho, pra caramba, esse mapa deve ser enorme. Legal, legal. The result of all this work is that this take on Gotham aims to feel like a legitimate place, not just a sandbox for spandex crime fighting. We've heard before that this will be the largest Gotham ever made in game form. O maior... A, a, a maior representação de Gotham já feita num game. But that's not what the developers are proud of. We made a very big Gotham City, but what I think is really unique to Gotham Knights is the density of it. Sometimes I will be searching for something or fighting a crime and not realize how close to me something else is happening that I'm going to want to interact with afterwards or before. There's just such a, a depth of nooks and crannies to explore inside our city and I think that that's really unique to Gotham Knights. The idea of a Gotham packed Ooh. with references, miniature histories Ooh. and sinister mysteries is alluring. After all, this is the promise of a town with real backstory, that it's not just the people living there who'll help tell the story, but the city itself. Gotham has been many things to many people. It's appeared in comics, movies, and gaming worlds. It's been reinvented repeatedly, traveling through time with us from block color 40s issues of detective comics to the gray monoliths of Christopher Nolan's trilogy. But all of those versions of Gotham have been snapshots of a city in its current form. Perhaps the most interesting thing about Gotham Knight's version is that we won't just see the city as it is, but hopefully Allah. learn what it's been. The van. Ela vai contar muito sobre o que ela já foi, we'll be mano. Covering Gotham Nossa, Knights animal. And exclusive animal. footage all this month as part of IGN First. And if... Aqui eles vão falar, né? Eles estão comentando que eles têm muito mais conteúdos para trazer e tal. Mas, cara, gostei demais desse vídeo, cara. Mostrando o quão denso é, o quão densa né, é a cidade de Gotham nessa versão feita pro game. Que, como eu falei, aparentemente tá sendo construída, ou já foi, enfim, camada em cima de camada 
histórica da cidade. Pelo que eu entendi, eles pegaram desde quando as cinco famílias chegaram a esse lugar e vieram montando a cidade de acordo com eventos reais que aconteceram né, em períodos específicos até chegar à, à, à época atual que nós vivemos, né, que é exatamente a que o jogo vai se passar. Caras, eu fiquei bem curioso, bem hypado mesmo com esse lance da gente poder explorar bastante. Gostei das poucas cenas que a gente viu aqui com o Robin. Olha aí o Asilo, ó. O Asilo Arkham vai estar tá lá. E já falaram que não vai ser igual o que a gente conhece. Provavelmente a gente vai ter quests aí dentro. Vai poder explorar. Mano, na moral, eu não sei vocês, tá? É, eu vejo muitos amigos comentando, falando sobre o game e tal, pá. E diferente deles, mano, que tipo assim, ainda não acreditam no potencial do game. Estão curiosos, sim, mas eu, cara, tô totalmente entregue, mano. E não é errado, né? Você duvidar, você... É, eu entendo que a gente só vai realmente... Nossa, olha isso aqui, mano. Esse traje do Robin tá muito louco. A gente só vai realmente entender como é que o game é quando a gente jogar, né? Provavelmente não vai ter beta nem nada, seria maravilhoso se tivesse. Mas quando a gente jogar, a gente vai tirar todas as nossas dúvidas. Mas eu, desde já, na moral, eu tô muito entregue a esse game. Eu gosto muito do, das histórias do Batman, dos games do Batman. E eu não consigo pensar em coisa do tipo, ah, esse game vai ser ruim. Não, e pro, pro meu gosto pessoal, eu tenho certeza que eu vou me divertir bastante e espero que nós todos possamos né, nos divertir juntos aqui no canal com os conteúdos que nós vamos trazer em outubro, que é o lançamento do game. Né? Olha, isso aqui é muito legal, né? A gente não vai ter o Batmóvel, vai, mas vai poder ter a... O que, que é isso, mano? Uma Batmoto? <risos> não sei, mas é legal, é uma maneira de explorar a cidade também. Ok, bacana. A gente viu o mapa pela primeira vez. Meu, comenta aí o que, que você achou. Se pra você tá interessante a proposta que eles aparentemente né, criaram pro mapa do game. Eu gostei bastante desse lance de exploração e de camadas em cima de camadas, mano. Comenta aí que eu quero sua opinião também, beleza? Beijão, sucesso, até a próxima. Tchau, tchau.